Hey guys, it's John from Physical Living, and in this video I'm going to talk about the similarities and differences between pull-ups and inverted rows, which are also called bodyweight rows and Australian pull-ups. So, just give you an example of an inverted row, just so you know what we're talking about. It's this horizontal pulling exercise. You can do it on a set of Liebert equalizer parallel bars, um, like here. You can do it on a suspension training system, like here. There are a number of different variations that you can do, um, but that's kind of the, the family of exercises of the inverted rows. And then everybody knows what pull-ups are, right? Um, you've got different variations of pull-ups, like your strict dead hang pull-up, you've got chin-ups as well. And you've got neutral grip pull-ups and many other variations. So this video is just, I'm gonna kind of just blab at you about the differences and similarities between inverted rows and pull-ups, which are both upper body pulling exercises where you're either pulling yourself closer to something or pulling something closer to yourself like with a dumbbell row right so um, they're both very similar um, but there are some key differences some of the similarities are that they they both target the upper body and they both are primarily back exercises for strengthening your back your lats uh, your rhomboids your traps you know basically the whole upper body is engaged but your back is what is oh you're singing a song um, your back is what is mostly targeted. It also targets your, your arms, especially your biceps and your forearms, uh, your rear deltoids, the back of your shoulders, um, and pull-ups also recruit your pecs a little bit. Most people don't know that. Um, another, you know, depending on the variation, you know, you're going to get different um, degrees of muscle activation all throughout your upper body. And when done properly, these are both um, actually full body exercises um, that, um, you know, primarily primarily train the, the upper body musculature. The short version of the video is that I think they are both great exercises and if you're involved in strength training, um, I think you should be doing both of them um, as part of your routine regularly. Um, and if not these variations, then some other vertical pulling exercise and some other horizontal pulling exercise, whether it's with a barbell or a machine, whatever, whatever however you train, you should be training those movement patterns, horizontal and vertical pulling, because uh, they're gonna target the same musculature um, to different degrees and from different angles or directions, and you're gonna get more, um, you're gonna get better well-rounded, more well-rounded and more balanced um, strength and muscle development if you train a variety of these movement patterns uh, and a variety of the exercise variations than if you just super specialize in, in one or two of them. Um, so, what else can I say? All right, that's kind of like the introduction. That was like the longest introduction ever. Um, body weight rows and inverted rows, um, also known as Australian pull-ups because you do them down under the bars, right? But you also do pull-ups from down under the bar too, uh, so I don't really get it. Um, but they are uh, an easier exercise, generally speaking, than pull-ups. And the main reason is because when you're doing pull-ups, at least your, your standard pull-ups, you're holding all of your weight um, if you're not doing an assisted version, which you can do an assisted version of pull-ups. There are, that's an important point, there are uh, progressions for both of these exercises to make them easier for the, the most basic beginner and very advanced variations that would challenge even elite athletes. Um, and so there's tons of stepping stones and building blocks to meet you where you are, to get that sweet spot um, so that you can adapt and get stronger um, based on your starting point. Um, but generally speaking, the inverted row is easier than the pull-up because you've got some of your weight on your feet. And you know, if I walk my feet out, for instance, I've got a little bit less weight on my feet, and so it's a little bit harder in this position. So that's just one example of a stepping stone. And if you um, grip in a higher position with your feet on, feet on the floor, so these rings are positioned a little bit higher than those handles are, it gets even easier just because I've got more weight on my feet. And so if I walk my feet back, and so the rings are even higher now, I've got less weight supported by my arms, I'm really not pulling that much of my body weight here. And so just by having a, probably the simplest way to progress with um, uh, the rows exercise is to get some kind of suspension trainer, whether it's a set of rings or a TRX or a jungle gym, whatever. There's all kinds of different um, options out there. And just keep gradually, you know, start up high, like 
up here. This is kind of in my way, but whatever. Uh, start up here where you're not supporting much of your weight. Walk your feet down a little bit so that you're supporting a little bit more of your weight with your arms. Just keep walking your way down. Hopefully this carpet doesn't start sliding on me as it has a tendency to do. And the lower you get, the, uh, the harder the exercise gets because more of your weight that you're supporting. And of course, with pull-ups, when you're supporting all of your weight, it's a significantly more challenging exercise than the body weight row. Um, and so for that reason, the body weight row exercise family is a great um, building block or stepping stone, beginner progression for working up to pull-ups. Um, but in my experience, it's not the just doing this is not going to help you get your first pull-up. Um, you're going to have to also do some direct pull-up work. And the reason is because it's a, it's a different movement pattern. It's horizontal pulling versus vertical pulling. And if you don't train um, specifically for that vertical pulling because of the, the law of specificity, you're, you know, in my experience, you're not going to be able to get that first pull-up unless you do some work on the pull-up bar. Um, or a set of rings, whatever, as long as you're training that vertical pulling movement pattern. Um, so, as I said earlier, each of these exercises, they target the same musculature just in different ways to different degrees because you're training that, that musculature in different ways, in different, uh, at different angles or different directions, um, if, that, if that makes sense. Um, but generally speaking, and this is this is more anecdotal than scientific. I've seen some um, scientific studies that uh, do EMG testing uh, on the back musculature during these exercises, but I've seen conflicting results. Um, so I don't want to make absolute statements. Um, we just don't know. As far as I can tell, we just don't know based on the science. But anecdotally, just from my experience, pull-ups are uh, more of a, for hypertrophy purposes, they're more of a back width increaser. So they, they really, really focus in on the lats, which are the, the, uh, these large wing-like muscles in your back um, that come from down here and attach up here by your shoulder blades. They are the largest muscle in your upper body. And so pull-ups in and of themselves are a great um, exercise for increasing your upper body muscle mass um, because of that, because they really focus on your lat development. Now that's only true though if you learn and practice recruiting your lats in the exercise. A lot of people perform pull-ups improperly and uh, as a result they um, don't recruit their lats um, much if at all. They, they make the pull-up more of an arms exercise um, and you know, there, are, there are some benefits to be had from that but there's a lot more benefits to be had from training the exercise the way it's meant to, which is um, as a full body exercise and recruits the largest amount of muscle mass possible. And so um, the, the main thing you wanna focus on is, is training to engage those lats. And one of the easiest ways to do that, to get started with it, is to teach yourself how to um, achieve full shoulder retraction in the bottom position and throughout the full range of motion so that your lats are as fully engaged as they can get um, throughout the full range of motion. That's gonna, that's just gonna get you stronger. It's gonna help you build more muscle. It's the way the exercise is supposed to be performed. And it's the same thing with the inverted row variations. You, you don't want to turn it into a arm dominant exercise. You want to recruit those larger, stronger, supposed to be stronger muscles of your um, upper back and your core. Um, and so, getting that scap retraction. In, the, in those positions is really important to be able to maintain. And so that's important with both um, and all, all of the exercise variations, unless you're specifically trying to use the pull-up or the row for strengthening your arms, which you can do. Um, your mileage may, may vary. Um, so pull-ups are generally this vertical movement pulling pattern. It's generally good for building your lats and, and uh, increasing the width of your back, kind of building your, your wings, as bodybuilders will call it. And horizontal pulling exercises like the inverted row are, generally speaking, better for increasing your back thickness. Um, so really adding some muscle onto like your mid-back and your upper back, um, which is where most of the, the work should be done 
um, with the inverted row exercises. And so if you want the best of both worlds, if you want a big, beefy, wide back, um, you should be in strong back, structurally sound, um, so that it can support you, support your posture, improve your posture. Both of these exercises um, can help improve your posture. Um, they will increase um, your strength in many other lifts, such as your bench press, your deadlift, your squat. You know, if you've got a weak back, um, that's going to hinder your performance in all kinds of things. And so, if you want the best, most well-rounded strength and muscle development, you need to be doing both horizontal and vertical pulling, and uh, different variations of that. You want to, you know, there, there's a there's a balance between specificity and variety in training that you know you got it's like an art and a science to figure out what's just right for you uh, but you want to make sure that you're not so specialized that you run into problems and stall in your progress and, and get suboptimal development and at the same time you don't want to be um, training with so much variety and so many different variations that you never make progress or get stronger um, because you don't stimulate your, your muscles in a progressive way over time um, to, to adapt. So anyways, uh, I, I think that's about all I was going to say about these exercises. You know, the take home point, you should be doing both. Um, if you want to focus on one more than the other um, in your routine for a particular reason, maybe you're really weak in one, maybe you really um, want to build focus on your, your back width. Um, or your back thickness, or maybe you just you know want to get better at pull-ups because they're a great, satisfying, empowering exercise, and a lot of people struggle with pull-ups. It's one of the more difficult exercises out there to uh, to learn, especially in the beginning, um, and so maybe that's a good enough reason. And, and the good the good news is that, like I alluded to earlier, there's all kinds of different ways to progress these exercises. Even if you're an advanced trainee, um, you can make them harder to the point where they're very challenging for you. You can do um, inverted rows of the weight vest um, or some other form of resistance. You can do single arm um, uh, inverted rows. You can work up to single arm pull-ups, which is an extremely advanced strength movement that you know, you've got to be very well prepared for and know what you're doing uh, before you even get into training for that. You need to have a very solid uh, foundation of strength in that uh, vertical pulling pattern before you start supporting all of your body weight from one arm, uh, which puts a lot of stress on these tissues. Um, but you can work up to that. You can do weighted pull-ups. You can do single arm pull-up variations like the stepping stones, and eventually, you know, single arm pull-ups, one arm chin-ups, they're often called. Um, so there are many ways to make these exercises easier. There's many ways to make them harder. Um, and I've got a, a number of videos, particularly on pull-ups, which is a, a common um, interest and. Uh, trouble exercise for a lot of people so I've got a lot of information on that if you check out my other videos um, or my website physicalliving.com I have another uh, pull-up training blog um, for uh, those trying to improve their pull-ups at thepullupsolution.com um, if you want to check that out so thank you for your time for watching this video um, please let me know if you have any questions and I guess I'll see you next time thanks and take care